We're in Ohio today with Steve Reckner. If y'all uh, follow him at all, follow us at all, um, it's pretty interesting because I'm from Texas and Steve drove out of his way. He lined up a house. He's going to teach us about basements. Uh, but of course, most home inspectors are tool junkies. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're, he's going to show us all his uh, cool tools and uh, how he carries them. Some of the setup that he does. He doesn't have everything, but he he brought some of his key tools with him and then we're gonna run in and talk about basements I know absolutely nothing about basements so it's like almost like he's training a new home inspector about basements I got the general idea but yeah I'm still pretty amateur with it and I told Chris it's just an extra tall crawl space so really it's, it's kind of the same thing <laughs> I get to walk in it instead of crawl yeah yeah all right so he's gonna show us some of his tools here So what, what do you got? All right, so um, first thing is my tool belt. Yeah. And I used to wear a big vest, kind of like Bob Madewell. And okay. I had all these tools on it, but it kept pulling down my back so bad that the chiropractor was like, you gotta put it on your hip so you can distribute the weight better. So you were, you had a vest, but it was like pulling you yeah, where? It was, it was pulling me too much, even though it seemed like it was real even around my body, but it wasn't. So um, I've seen this a lot on a lot of the forums. I use the DeWalt. Um, Okay. Yeah, so to get the panel boxes off faster or anything you need to get but to? I always use, uh, have this backup ratcheting one um, just in case because the batteries go out on this and then you don't want to have to run around looking like an idiot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, smoke pens for oh, yeah, testing yeah. the uh, water heaters. I need to pick Keep up some of those. Right properly. Um, obviously, the uh, 5 16 and quarter inch nut driver to get the covers off the furnaces. Okay. And then just another screwdriver. I don't know why I've got that one still. Uh, Sensicon. What's that do? Carbon monoxide. Oh, so you just carry it on your belt. Yeah. To uh, so turn it on like this and hold it. Yeah, and you just walk around with it on, and yeah. then if it it will uh it'll, it'll go. It'll start beeping lightly if we're low, like in the 100s, 200s parts per million. Oh, okay. And then um, if we're if we're really in trouble, it gets louder. And, and beeps more and faster and, and alerts you to a problem. Oh man, you're making me want to buy some more tools. Well, this is pretty essential. I even yeah. tell the realtors, I mean, you could walk into a basement of a house yeah. that has a real problem going on, not knowing it like today, we could just walk down there and if you had a big problem, there are chances that you may you could not make it out of the basement every once in a while if it was that bad. Really? Yeah, if it was 2,000, 3,000 parts per million or more, there's there's a possibility you has not, it, might not make it out of the has basement. Has it happened to you yet? Not me. Yeah, but, but it's happened to other people. I did have it once where I was in a condo and um, I lit the um, fireplace uh -huh. and the CO would just was rolling back. It wasn't getting out at all. The flue was open, but there was some kind of blockage up above yeah. and it immediately shot up to like 1700 parts per million. Wow. How, mu how much does this weigh? You know, like, oh, just it, like a little, ounces. like it's a little super, beeper super type thing. Yeah, oh, even less. Yeah. How, how much is it? Uh, I think they're about 150, 160 bucks. Yeah. But I mean that, that can find a major problem just sitting there and it's just always on. How long does it hold a charge for? Oh, I've accidentally left it on for days. It just has a, a little C battery in the back of it. Oh, okay. One. So, um, yeah, and so it nice. works really well. I like that. That's a pretty cool uh, tool. I've never seen that one before. And then this is my clip for um, just to hold my big camera, the one that I'm going to show you. Oh, that zooms. all right. So I can click it onto there. And then over here, I got the uh, gas has circuit analyzer. Yeah, gas leak. Sorry, oh, the like circuit. That. Oh, okay, circuit. I didn't bring that today, but I've got the same ones you guys do. Oh, the 8900s. So. Oh, okay, you got the gas. Yeah. Do you you don't carry that in your belt though? You what do you keep Not in on a belt? It's just in the in a pouch yep. in the extra hard case in the car. Yeah, that's that's big <laughs> to carry in there. It is. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I always carry the backup. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you know, one to, to plug in. Nice. Um, and then the moisture meter. This is the one you and I started talking about years ago. This is oh you man, got. I love this one. Yeah, it, this is this is this has saved me. I can't tell you how many times because one of the major issues you'll find you can find with this is water behind tiles. Oh yeah, those bathrooms of yep. real expensive houses mm -hmm. where you know you can see that the grout's bad. You can see there's no caulking certain areas and. But before you turn the shower on, yeah, uh, ten, <laughs> yeah. my one employee turned the shower on, and then he's like, "There's water all over this bathroom." We're like, "Well, of course there is." There's <laughs> yeah. the water but uh, yeah. uh, you can put this up against the wall, like under the windows and stuff. When there's windows and showers, which are that's a horrible idea. Oh yeah, and sense how much water is down there. Oh yeah, you know, before you do it, which nice. is huge. Um, this is one of the things I was telling you about. This is the smoke pole. Okay. Com for smoke detectors that are way up. 
Oh. Press the button on the smoke detectors. Oh, okay, okay. Nice. Instead of yeah, so in, a little ladder. One of my uh, buddies has Chip Stone. He uses a blind man stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a driver without the head on it for a long time. It didn't yeah. extend anymore. This one's bigger. And then obviously the flashlights like you and I were talking about. We like the, both of us like different brands of the Phoenix. Okay, yeah, you use like the, the UC35. The newer brand. It's got the uh, charging port on it that you can hit it, you know, in the car in between mm -hmm. inspections. Or the battery pack like I was telling you about. So, um, And then you have the voltage yeah, sniffer. And the voltage sniffer. Everyone there. carries that. Yep. Or should. So that's pretty much it for around my, oh wait, me the tool belt. But then I've, you know, got the probe. Okay. Know, oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I always have a black marker for some reason for marking up like mold samples and stuff like that for our little aero cell. That's a pretty nice belt. So that's a husky belt. Yeah. It wasn't and very expensive either. It was like 20 bucks, 19 bucks. Really? Bucks. I, I mean, that's pretty heavy duty, I think. Yeah, it's in it's leather. I, mean, I like it a lot. So then we also carry around these uh, extra battery packs with us in the vehicles. This is called a Zero Lemon. Um, it's a 30,000 milliamp. Um, rechargeable battery port it's got four um, USBs on top one's a 2.0 charging point the other ones are, are uh, one or five volt and one one amp yeah and what is that so that's just to charge your yeah. tools if they if they charge go down the flashlight that, with the mini USB you can charge your cell phone if you do reports on it you can charge a laptop iPads nice yeah that's um, a good idea it'll it'll recharge my phone eight to ten times yeah your power goes out in the house or yeah. you don't have power or something yeah yeah for sure Running in between houses. Yeah. So then, like I was saying, the the camera. This is the clip that that hooks onto the belt. Okay. So I'll put it on there. Screw it in there. And then, you know, most of the time I'm not. I'm trying not to use it, but if I need to, mm -hmm. then it just clips on here. Nice. And you just throw that. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. yeah I normally I there. use my pockets a whole lot. And then I just hit that and it slides right off. But that's only for this zoom camera. I use my phone for all my report writing. Yeah. But this camera is awesome. This is a Coolpix B700. Um, I can try to get some of these stuff so on my tool list. Show them that house over there like we were looking at before. Yeah. And you can see way over there, uh, right in that valley, it just, you know, from across the street, you can't really see anything. It looks like a valley. Yeah. And then if you, we zoom in with the camera. See, I don't know if it's showing up. And then we get even a little bit closer. Oh, there it does show up a little bit. There you go. We can even see a stick laying in the valley from way across the street. Yeah. So I can read serial numbers on vent caps with this thing. It's so. Yeah, we. Ca I can't see that stick. With with. And then, with, um, and then what the nice thing is, like if you can't get up on a roof because of the height of it for some reason or the pitch, and you're taking photos with this from close in. Yeah. And then you can go back to your computer and zoom in even more. Zoom so in on. The, you can get. So that's a heavy megapixel yeah. camera. Yeah. Very very close. So. Nice. Love that. That's a pretty cool setup. And then he carries the FLIR C2s. He has okay. two of them. And he has a waterproof camera there. It looks and then like. just a backup. But this was, the, this was the Coolpix B900, but I don't like it anywhere near as much as that little one. So. Yeah, so, so he has his phone, then he has a backup camera, and then a backup to the backup camera. Well, the backup, <laughs> the, backup the, the zoom-in camera. Yes. So it, that's, you know, because the phone won't zoom, zoom in enough. Right. Um, especially the iPhones. And then... Um, this Gee. is my wife's car because we're on vacation. Yeah, I mean, he normally has a truck. Here. Yeah, the truck, the inspection truck. But yeah, I carry this backpack. I love that backpack. So, That's a good backpack. Um, That's on the, the tool moment, list. I, I shouldn't have all this in here, but I've got an iPad and I've got both uh, um, laptops. And then we've got the new. Uh, this is the Apple. new laptop. Yeah, the there. new Mac Apple one. So this is how we're doing our reporting on site. We're finishing with the MacBook Air. Okay. Um, it's about eight hundred bucks. Yeah, and it's real fast. It's keeping real up. Fast. Yeah, real fast. No, and then, do you no always problem. use this ladder right here? Is, is this your go-to ladder? I like the little giants. For the inside stuff. Oh, okay. For attics, scuttles and whatnot. Oh, that's um, what you use. Or if we need to, this has got a real big, thick, heavy rubber silicone top on oh, it. Oh, yeah. So I, I can go in any house, no matter the value, and not worry about marking up the walls. If I need to get up to a second story bay of windows to do a you know moisture test or something yeah i can climb up with that and not hurt anything all right and then uh then you and i both have the same little giant for getting on the oh the, okay. i like the big huge wing that they sell yeah keep you off the gutters and stuff oh yeah i haven't bought that yeah but that works really well and then i carry boots with me all the time yeah so that's it for my gear that's uh that's a short gear i know he has more gear but oh. this is his uh what Tons. is 
This, this was vacation quick gear. Yeah, this is All just he just threw a bunch of stuff in there and he wanted to show me what he carried. So um, that was a quick rundown of his tools. So we're gonna just walk around the property and uh, he's gonna. Sh we're gonna do a quick walkthrough on the inside like we would any other day, right. and then we'll walk around the exterior, and then we'll go back into the interior of like the in-depth inspection of a basement of what you would look at. All right, cool. Let's go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're walking down to the the basement here. And then, uh, well, you mentioned something about the handrail earlier. Yeah, well, I think most people do this. You did, you said you did too, but yeah, um, just the uh, return. It always One needs the first thing we're looking for as we're grabbing on because we don't know the condition of the step, so I'm looking for something to grab onto as I'm walking. Right. So the first thing I'm looking for is just the handrail sturdy, is it connected, and then does it have a good return? Yeah, and I always give it a good shake, you yeah, know, because sure. you don't want to just lightly hold on to it, you want to aggressively yeah. knock it. And then obviously, you're feeling the steps as you're going down mm -hmm. and seeing how they are. Nice. All right, so here's a basement. I've been in like four of these my entire life. <laughs> yeah. So now he's going to go back to the house he's staying in tonight and look around the basement. Yeah, it's start inspecting that one. So yeah. like you've heard Chris say in a lot of his videos and stuff, I do the same thing, go right, stay right. So mm -hmm. I immediately get down here and can't really go that way. So we're going to go this way. Yeah. Um, but the first thing we do is we're looking around is, you know, we're looking at the walls. We're seeing if there's any staining, efflorescence, water problems, obviously, that just stick out at us. But the first thing you'll notice is this one has insulation on the top half. Right. So we have to disclaim that in the reports that, you know, we can't, can't take, see it. Can't tear it down, can't see underneath it in some spots. This one had a lot of loose areas where you could look underneath it. And we always, you know, we'll take, do our best to look, but you have to disclaim it because if they tear it down later and then they find something major, they're going to be calling you. So Right. What, what about something as small as this? You know, like the spalling? Is that is that just like any other foundation so in that's Texas? That's actually not spalling. Okay. Um, that particular spot there was during the pour. It didn't get vibrated very well. Oh, okay. So that's just a bad spot. So you see that all every day? In these yeah. poured ones. Uh, this is a little bit... Kind of a sloppy pour. In oh, really? Terms of a solid block wall, this one's a little bit sloppier than most. So. Okay, but it. What so about? I see them a lot smoother than that. Just because it's sloppy doesn't mean it's not performing, no, no, right? No, it's just ugly. It's oh, okay, just <laughs> it's just not pretty. And a lot of them have brick patterns in them now and mm. some other stuff, so they're really kind of more decorative. Oh wow! But this one is just kind of super plain, flat. Uh, all right. You can see when they're the flatter they are, obviously, just like drywall and stuff, the more you see the imperfections in them. Okay, gotcha. So. So obviously we like to do that just like we do upstairs. We like to do a quick macro, if you will, just trying to get around here and seeing if there's anything major before we start. So we just do a quick scan around the uh, yeah and the so foundation. Like there's a little crack over here behind the table. Yeah. So we noticed I noticed this crack and I was like, oh, I was like, oh, Steve, what's that? You know, and, and then you mentioned it was just you get those all the time and yeah. you, you it's can just like this one's easier for them to see, but okay, you yeah, see this one here. And it's in its hairline. Yeah, it's at a best. it's a hairline crack. We get these. Here, but. We get these in the Texas foundations all the time, and we just let them know. I was like, no, that's common. Yeah. Concrete does three things: it dries, it shrinks, and it cracks. That's it. It's yeah, an so and sit, and sit still. That's all it does. Yeah, so this little bit of moisture coming through isn't like a a major issue. No, no we always tell people, you know, if it, if it starts to get bigger than about three sixteenths of an inch or so, mm -hmm. you look at any time we can start injecting epoxy into them that's about when you're starting to look to call somebody and say I'm, I'm getting too much movement too much okay it's more than hairline and another crack right here I saw on the floor right yeah and but as you can see this is what I was telling Chris you can see along the edges there that it's that these are sitting on footers right and this floor is sitting on gravel that was this was laid after the walls were put in right so this is separate from the walls it has you now this is a it, it's a decent size little crack but um, and it's over here next to this pillar. Of but floor. it's not supporting the weight of the house no, at all. This pillar is sitting on its own concrete underneath here. Right. So it has actually nothing to do with this particular. So part you of got the floor. this that's supported by a, a whole different footer. Then you have the walls that are supporting the house. And now you have the slab, or not slab, it's yeah. mainly just a floor, yeah. a four inch thick piece of concrete. Right. And uh, if you see a crack running through it, it's not a major issue what you're looking for maybe is what water coming up from underneath it yeah efflorescence water staining around those cracks and then um, uh, obviously you can hit it with a moisture meter but anytime this 
most of these spots and stuff on the wall are going to have higher moisture levels. All right, so you know, scanning around, then he showed me uh, that we have you know water heaters and the furnaces are in the basements, which uh, I guess that's pretty common. Here and it is. You guys usually have them in the attic. We're in the attic or the garage. Yeah. Garage. Uh, they've been getting better about putting the water heater in the garage. They're starting to learn their lessons. Fifty gallons of water in the attic's not. The well, best the idea. Condensating stuff in the attic. Yeah. I think maybe all this. I mean, that's what we do in our condos here. Mm -hmm. Most of our condos. Sometimes you'll get the furnace up and above the garage. Yeah. Um, but the most of the time, we'll find this stuff in a closet in a condo. Right. Here. And then uh, right here, this is where he uses his smoke pins just to make sure that the the carbon monoxide is leaving the uh, the home. Yeah. And that's a good idea too also we could do a smoke pen video okay yeah uh, so actually right here you can see we have a t connection instead of a y also. okay so that's something you and i will write up and tell the homeowner about later um is that you know it's better to have the y connection okay so that the the so, smaller appliance can flow into the so you don't have a back appliance. back flow no back drafting yeah. okay so that would be an important reason to do a test is to get this fired up and running and then do a smoke pen test to make sure that's running. So so the, we don't if they're both running at the same time, right. it's pulling properly. Make sure it's pulling, yeah. Okay. If it's pulling, I mean, but does it always pull is the question. Okay. You know what I mean? And I don't think we saw any cracks over here. Yeah. You did see some spots and that kind of threw you off a little bit. Yeah, but it's just, it's just, just sloppy splashing from the actual uh, foundation pour. Okay. And because it's just, they just dropped it from a big trough, oh, basically. Oh, okay. And it just splashed everywhere. Nobody cleaned it up. Yeah, so it's really it, rough. Yeah, it is pretty rough. I, I probably would be pretty mad about that, essentially. All right, cool. So that that is just the quick pass. So we just get an idea. What we're looking for is water or major cracking and so you can get an idea you spot it and then after you spot it then you go on the outside to figure out where it's coming from i don't know if this is focused we'll see <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right so now we're going to go outside and uh talk about how the water's flowing around the property all right so we're starting on the outside all right so one of the things you can see um this client doesn't like to do housework self-proclaimed he does not like to do housework so yeah. he needs to hire some people to come in and clean the vinyl you know, to keep that moss and algae off this is the the north facing side in ohio is our bad side yeah and uh he just needs to get somebody to come in here and clean that off either with soap and water power washer just as long as they're professional know what they're doing um i was telling chris one of my pet peeves that i i like and we'll show you a perfect example on the other side of the house is these accordion downspouts. I like to think of them as quick and temporaries until you can get a professional to come install smooth aluminum stuff because um, those, when this stuff is extended, and look, see the holes? So he's not getting water going out at all. He's got holes in here and that water is staying here and going right back into the negative grating around the house, which he had pretty much everywhere. Okay. Even though it wasn't causing any major issues on the inside, you can see the whole edge of the house never got backfilled properly after they came the, and did the final grade. What I always like to say is they're not causing, ma causing major issues right now. Right. You know, like over time, anything can happen. Water going down, freezing yeah, underneath the ground. Chris about these accordion downspouts, these little ripples, they fill up with water. Obviously you can see they get damaged. And then the water doesn't go where they're supposed to. But when they get all filled up with water, that thing is actually really heavy. And then it'll pull the gutters off of each other and off the house. And then you've got water depositing right next to the foundation. And we'll show you an example of that on the other side. Nice. And then I thought this was strange. Y'all had the, the condenser sitting right. off the ground so right there. Chris will show you over here on this other house. See how it's sitting up there? So we started doing that um, with newer houses to keep them out of the snow okay um but we still have them sitting in the ground on you can look around and see a lot of them sitting actually on the ground in this neighborhood but this one um just happens to be a lot lower to the ground just because of the angle of the, the ground over here if they would have put this on the other side of the house it could have been taller like that one but this one's low so it's not really doing it any good but it's coming off the it's sliding off the bar down here at the bottom yep so it's starting to we'll tell the client about that um, also all the entry points into the home so over there by the gas and around the um, air intake for the furnace and the sump pump over here you can see the putties all starting to get bad and deteriorated 
which always happens around 15, 17, 18 years or so. Stuff just, or even sooner, goes bad. But you can see he needs to seal up around these things that are around the foundation as well. And then you can see behind the AC unit and along this whole side, we've got lots of negative grading. Okay, so one of the things we're going to show you now is this driveway is actually pretty steep going down that way. But right here at the first square, when you get down kind of low and look at it, this, these two sections here actually slant back towards the garage. And that's going to take water towards the garage and cause problems. You can see this end has dipped down even a little bit more. And that end down there. It's kind of still up in the middle a little bit, but it's fallen down on the sides as well. So that leads to foundation issues on the corners too. Um, and then if you were to get up close like Chris was a little bit ago, you can see there's two cracks that started in the, in the garage floor. Might not necessarily be because of the negative grading, but it also doesn't help because we get a lot of frost and thaw and freezing weather here. Right. The water goes in there and then it freezes and then it pushes on the concrete and doesn't help. Right. So right now it, it has not failed. So like as a home inspector, we're performance inspectors. So we can say it's performing, right? But doesn't mean that it won't lead to issues down the line. Correct. So you always want to report it. And then we can see on the sidewalk over here that we're also having issues where the first part started sinking down. And then Chris will get up close and show you where they tried to fix it a long time ago. And it actually has sunk down, what, three inches? Yeah. Three or three and a half inches. And it's fallen away. So anytime you see repairs and you can see how far they've separated, you know how far it's traveled. Right. So. Um, which just makes it a little bit more of a trip hazard, a little bit harder to, to keep track of. So as we move along on the outside of the house, Chris and I were talking about how we like to do uh, what I call micro and macro going around the house. I go in opposite directions, once up close, once far back, and he just calls it up close and, and far away. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we were seeing over there with the accordion downspouting, um, you'll see right over here with the prime example, where it filled up with water in the ripples and then pulled it right off of the downspouting. Uh, yep. The only reason I know this is because I know the person who lives here <laughs> very well. Yeah, put it back for Not him. Not my house, but yeah, um, but yeah I just, we're going to tell him he needs to put this on here and get some you know, screws to put in there to help hold it on better. Problem is though, is that when this fills up with water and this is held on with screws and doesn't pop off here, then it's putting stress on all those holders and pulls them down as well. You can pull it right off yeah. the vinyl. So here we see a lot more negative grading. You can see it over there in that corner. Oh yeah, I see it right there, yep. Yeah. And then as we go around the house, like Chris was showing you, Chris was on the other side of the house, now we're on the, the right-hand side, and this just continues the whole way around the house. Right. And it's really just a matter of getting dirt and have a 5% positive slope away from the house all the way around. Yeah, so you're not talking a major project, that's like a day project. Yeah, just dirt a, from Home Depot or a landscaping yeah. company to drop you off a truckload of dirt and just mm -hmm. shovel it around the house and pat, tamp it down and you have to you have to do it a couple of times because the first time it's going to settle too. Right. And after that settles, you might have to do it two or three times to get the what we really really want. Yeah, and then I always call this out all the time in Texas, and inspectors almost make fun of me because I Same call it out. Yeah, the lack of kick out flashing here. And there's a better example over here that Chris yeah. noticed. On the other side, yeah, it's a perfect example where you can see the water line, how it, it travels down. And then you can even see how it, it might even be making it behind the, the siding there. So Well, it's, it's definitely getting on the foundation wall, which is going down to the basement. And that's where we saw that crack in the floor. Yep. Yep. And that was where that one hairline crack was that we got up close to that we said, you know, this hairline doesn't matter. It's always water. <laughs> always thinking like water. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah. So you're right. That was exactly where one of those cracks were. So that, were you think it may have frozen and pushed that maybe? That's always the thing. It's okay. Water gets down there and freezes and it pushes out. And then when it thaws and goes away, the wall doesn't come back with it right the wall stays pushed out oh. so that's how we end up with and this is a poured wall so what they do more is crack than really flex and bow okay um, the foundation cinder block walls are the ones that you know can come apart in the different rows and the first three or four that are below the level of the grade of the ground are the ones that start doing this okay start bowing real bad when they have major water that gets there and freezes and that's not an easy fix hydrostatic pressure yeah interesting not an easy fix not at all so it's actually a big thing a big argument in the homeowner industry is how a splash block is supposed to be placed so if you see right here this lip this lip is not the back of the splash block it's actually the it should be the front so what happens is, is water should travel down through the splash block 
run across this metal slab here and slow down. So it should be like this. Or maybe like this. There you go. So water rolls down. This should be more of an upward angle whenever you add in dirt. It comes up to the lip, slows the water down so it doesn't cause any erosion. And that's how a splash block is supposed to be placed. So I'll show them the big erosion spot there underneath it, that where it's right, been happening. Right underneath, well right here against the wall. Oh yeah, for sure. You can see how it's rolled back. So water's just rolling downwards. So we need an upward angle and water splashes. It's called a splash block. <laughs> yeah, and where Chris had lifted it out of there, you can see this big hole right in here. You can see where it was going down there and causing problems already. Yeah, so it's not s splashing, it's just eroding the soil away. Right. So, there you go. That's how a splash block's supposed to be installed. Coming around the back of the home. Right, so we had already talked about the, the moss and the algae, he needs to clean off the siding, but when we talk about the negative grading, um, this side of the house, just because I know the neighborhood, he gets a lot of um, driving rain coming in from this side. And so he gets a lot more potential water issues on this side with the negative grading. So if you come up here close and check it out. Yeah, we do have some grass, but look, this, this area is all dead. It doesn't have any grass up here. And you can see the efflorescence and the water staining that's going on and how this is wet and this is dry over here because he's getting a lot of moisture that's coming down here. So, And again, this is a pretty easy fix, right? Yeah. Oh, super easy. It's just he just... Usually we see it in a couple spots or one side of the house or something like that, but he really does need to go from the edge of this porch all the way to the other edge of the porch. All the way around his house has got pretty yeah. much continuous. So and just to add it up, out about be a little bit more than most, but yeah. Four or five inches of soil around the structure and you're good. Well, enough to create a 5% positive slope. Okay, way. nice. Yeah. In Texas, it's a 1%, so it's 5% recommended here? I think that's the recommended. I think five, <laughs> five's better than one. To yeah. Take the water away from the house. More's always better. Yeah. yeah. That sounds kind of wimpy there, Texas. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Second pass of the uh, the basement here. I noticed that you know we at sump pumps. We don't have a whole lot in my area of Texas. And my question was, is are they always there? You know, are the sump pumps always in the basements in Ohio? Not always. I mean, there is a lot of them, but not always. If the builder, you know, didn't feel there was a high water table or they're on a hillside or they're on top of a mountain and there's no chance of, of water build up in the basement, then, then uh, some houses don't have them. Okay, second pass of the, the foundation. I noticed there's a two inch water line almost. That's what it looks like. Efflorescence is, you know, is that a huge deal? You know? No, because uh, one of the things, I mean, it could be, and you could always see where it is, so I won't say no, but never say never, never say always, right? Right. So um, here we can see the, that we know from being outside that the, the ground level was pretty much right underneath this window. So we know that this is well below the, the grade of the ground. So we know that if we tore down this insulation, we could probably see some of that water issues we were just looking at on the back side of the house. But this is way down there below that. And we ran the moisture meter on it and stuff, and it's looking pretty dry compared to being something that's actually active and wet. Um, so that is more than likely when the house was being built and the foundation walls were poured, they have to obviously dig them out. And um, when they dig them out, then, you know, the wall is standing up straight and the, the dig out's way out here and water can just, and during a heavy rain especially, can just get in there and sometimes they even have to pump it out. And it'll get in there and stain the walls. And staining and efflorescence um, on cinder block walls and poured walls, it's a dinosaur. So okay. it'll be there forever. You can't get rid of it. Right. So yeah. that was that's a lot of, that was like, a lot. Yeah, so you're saying this might be coming that's not coming from the negative slope out, outside be because here behind this insulation. you would see it it would be behind this wall here and so it would be wet all the way you down. would see efflorescence throughout this whole wall and then right it's just because it's on the base here it's it's more than likely more the only reason we say more than likely is because we did test it with the moisture meter and found out that this was dry right. now we will see those sometimes and you'll see them right here at these cracks and these mortar joints where the two forms came together mm -hmm. and you'll see where water will leak there because that's definitely a point where the two two forms came together and then right. the pins and then the water that's usually a spot that it, it can get through if they're not sealed up real good uh, but this one just happens to not be but we always use a moisture meter to try to back up our findings all right nice
All right, so we're gonna wrap up the video there. Uh, if you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. And I believe you're starting a YouTube channel too, aren't you? Yeah, Reckner Home Inspections. Okay, yeah, so Reckner Home Inspections, subscribe to his channel too as well. He's gonna start producing more content. And uh, that was a, a quick crash course on his tools and then uh, just a brief look on foundation issues or foundation inspection, not issues. And that wasn't everything, of course, uh, but you know, it's kind of a crash course. So that's pretty interesting to me. I probably won't walk into another one for a few years, but <laughs> never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, Christmas Day Action. Please like and subscribe to the videos and uh, check us out on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.